from Songset Kim from uh, Seoul National University. And the title is Influence of Seduction System on the Opening of the IU Trough. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, my name is Sung Sat Kim. Um, so this talk will be very short and brief because um, this talk is based on um, the ongoing research because uh, Gabriel and I was discussing about this topic for a while and then but this summer was pretty busy for both of us. So we couldn't bring up actual numerical model result. So I'm going to present what kind of, uh, what kind of basic findings that actually um, draw our study. And um, so Gabriel is the, here is Hakyam Chang. He's um, Sangmuk's um, graduate student. He graduated to 2012, and then he's now working at the Korea Public Research Institute. So he did a lot of work on this, um, the uh, reanalyzing the geophysical and geochemistry uh, data obtained from the AO trough. So here is the outline of uh, talk. So I'm going to introduce the AO trough and what we found from the AO trough. And also that will lead to problem, uh, problematic characteristics of the AO trough. And then that's why we need to uh, develop a new hypothesis that may lead to us to understand the causal relationship between slab initiated vent flow and the, the opening of air trough. So here's the air trough, which is located at the southern tip of the Philippine Sea Plate. So we all know that Philippine Sea Plate is surrounded by the uh, subduction system, except the uh, air trough. However, air trough is not uh, well surveyed by many nations. So Japan did not go into the air trough. Also, only Korea uh, had two times uh, had two times to survey this the middle portion of the air trough and the southern portion of the air trough. So you can ask Sangmuk during the dinner time or something. So he has a great story why we could uh, go into this EEG of um, Indonesia. So here's a lack of basically a lack of high resolution geophysical and geochemical data. But this portion is very relatively small portion, uh, portion of the uh, leach system if we think of the global leach uh, global mid ocean leach system. However, this is a very unique place to examine the relationships if there is any existing relationships between subduction, surrounding subduction system, and the uh, air trough itself. So, well, we did some studies, but I think this Fujiwara paper, 1995 paper, is the most well-known paper about the air trough. So they went to the northern tip of the air trough, basically. So this portion. So they, sur they surveyed only the uh, northern tip of the air trough because of they couldn't get into this EEZ of uh, Indonesia. So they got geophysical data, and then what they did was they based on the sedimentation, uh, sediment thickness. So based on sediment thickness, they translated that into the age based on the sedimentation rate observed in DSDP site 62. However, the DSDP site 62 is close to air trough. However, it is not on the air trough because it was on the Caroline plate. So there is some large uncertainties uh, related with estimating the age of the sedimentation, uh, sediment thickness. However, anyways, they estimated uh, the spreading rate as 0.1 millimeter per year and suggested that the opening of the air trough started around uh, 25 and May. Now, based on their estimation, if we look into uh, the spreading systems based on the spreading rate, and the air trough will be labeled as an ultra slow spreading, uh, spreading system. It does have a lack of transport force, so it doesn't have any uh, transport force or very active volcanism, uh, evidence of any, no evidence of uh, active volcanism. So we can think that, well, air trough is ultra slow. Okay, so, <laughs> yeah, if the air trough is ultra slow, so it does. It should have a uh, geochemical uh, signals. So here is a white uh, 2001 paper. So he accumulated 
uh, all the geo uh, geochemical data from the uh, well-known leach system. So what he found was if the spring rate is less than 20 millimeter per year, we would see a uh, significant increase of NA8 and um, also average uh, layers elements. And uh, also here is, yeah, lanternum and uh, sanitum ratio. Also you will see a sharp decrease of CaO and aluminum ratio. So we need to observe this kind of um, uh, geochemical signature if the air trough is ultra slow. So here is some data obtained along the air trough, although it does not have a very well spaced sampling, um, well spaced sampling, however it does show uh, the lanternum and sanitum ratio does not go above the one. So here's the lab means the uh, enriched uh, air trough project, so which is located at the center of this um, seamount. So uh, Park et al. paper suggests that maybe air trough ceased uh, with formation of this seamount. That's why it showed the uh, enriched uh, project. However, the most of parts is not enriched. So it actually testifies that the air trough is not uh, cannot be categorized as ultra slow based on geochemistry. <coughs> now, if you look into geophysics, so geophysics shows that, okay, so actual uh, along axis profile shows a lot of um, relief, and then the actual value is very deep, about like 5,000 meter, and also the cross profile shows that the very logged, uh, logged flow and also lifted. Um, lifted blocks around this um, the lifted valley. Also, it does not have show, uh, it also, as I mentioned before, it does not show any uh, transfer fault at this um, uh, air trough leach system. So some of you may wonder why we just discussed geochemistry and our best metric, not magnetics. So air trough is located at the magnetic equator. So nearby the magnetic equator, that's why if we go to this air trough with uh, magnetic observations, it does not show any significant um, magnetic uh, anomalies because the spreading direction and then magnetic field is perpendicular to each other. So it basically cancels out each other. So we do have magnetic um, anomalies, but it does not show any significant um, uh, anomalies along this uh, around this um, rich segment. So we could not use this magnetics to uh, calculate any uh, spreading rates of the air trough. So basically, if people need to look into this air trough based on sedimentation rate, which was not observed in the air trough. So they basically looking into this air trough, okay, air trough maybe ultra slow. However, the geochemistry shows that, well, it's not ultra slow. It should be slow. So, because of the data, and we need to say, well, where is the air trough is located? Is the ultra slow or slow? Because the basimetry shows that lack of transform force. So it does satisfy the ultra slow categories. However, also it does show the deep lift valleys, also very relief. Also it does show the low lift mountains. However, the spending rates are very uh, different from the ultra slow and the slow. So where is this air trough is located? So now we need to think about again about this air trough in terms of other data sets available to us. So here is the Ali and Hall paper and published in 1995. So previous studies I showed you is basically based on the marine data. But Ali and Hall data is actually based on the land based. So they got the rock samples and then they calculate this paleo uh, latitude, a uh, parallel latitude of those rock samples. They, so, what they proposing was so here is the Philippine Sea plate, and then it was subducted uh, beneath the Australian plate. And then the Philippine Sea plate was rotating around this time, too. So, that is shown now here is the um, transfer fault is uh, initiated. Then, Caroline plate is coming in, and but it also subducting beneath the uh, Australian plate, and then this Carolina plate was moving up, 
as the Philippine split is rotating away uh, from this air trough. So here is the air trough is initiated around the late Miocene. And then air trough is um, completed its opening, and then now it's located at the current location. So here it says that uh, they basically predicted the, uh, the opening of the air trough is started around 11 MA, which is totally different from the marine uh, Totally different from the estimation of the marine sedimentation lake, which was 25 MA. So 25 opening of the air trough is if it happened around 11 MA. So that means the uh, the spreading rate of the air trough must be much faster than what we have predicted. Also, the same we look into the other areas. So air trough is located in this part. So. Here is a uh, celibate sea, and then here is through sea. So they actually did uh, have some uh, drilling um, expeditions. So what they found is there is a lot of uh, focus. Um, the uh, sedimentation happened during the 10 MA or 12 MA because of their unlifted uh, the, uh, tectonic events around this area. However, the air trough is located here, so maybe air trough might be affected by this uh, focus sedimentation. So the sedimentation rate has been underestimated to calculate the, the uh, when we calculate the, the spreading rate of air trough. So there is some uncertainties um, uh, involved with these uh, observations. So here is, um, we try to um, hypothesize a, uh, a mechanism why air trough is open at that position not just a certain problem. Why, why there is no, uh, so basically the origin of the air trough is initiated by maybe slab. So here is the Hassena, Hassena et al. 2010 paper. So what it shows that probably most of you sh show this kind of uh, similar plus uh, many, many times during this workshop. So here is a um, uh, service going in and then it initiates um, forward flow, and then also it does initiate the uh, toroidal flow. So here is the vertical, and here is the horizontal view. So when the toroidal flow is focused and for a while, and then the slab is um, still developing, and then uh, here is another focus, uh, the toroidal flow happening at the edge of the uh, the tip of the uh, uh, subduction system. So what is so from this study, what we Try to hypothesize is that okay, so air trough is here, but before 20 MA, air trough, air trough was not there. And then Caroline C plate was now sub being subducted and then moving toward the Philippine C plate. So that movement may uh, enhance this total flow, which are related with the uh, subducting of the Caroline C plate. So that total flow may help the opening of the air trough. So that's the, uh, the new hypothesis that we try to uh, test uh, during this study. So future goals is basically we going to build uh, a BEM based uh, numerical model with, um, with the, uh, the expertise of the barrier. So that we try to investigate the any casual, uh, any causal relationship between the slab initiated vent flow and the opening of the air trough. So we need to examine what's the maximum and minimum because we do not have a solid data to basically constrain the, our, our numerical model. So we're going to test the, what's the range of the, uh, this uh, numerical model can provide for us. So we are going to test the maximum and minimum of the temperature change of the temperature changes of the mantle below the air trough, and then also we will test the uh, the slave instrument flow how it will be changing uh, with the, the changes in kinematics of the Philippines plate. So therefore, so final goal is we, we basically try to develop a hypothesis to explain the origin of the air trough. So why air trough is basically initiated uh, at that certain position and at that certain time based on the geodynamic and geophysical and geochemi uh, geochemical constraints. So I hope next time we can bring a lot of uh, numerical model result to um, entertain you guys. Thank you. OK. Thanks a lot. Other questions? OK.
Okay. So another we can proceed further. We can always wait. 